What's up, guys? First place, Dune Case. We won a case tourney with this. It was a three on three tournament with Adventure Synchron. This deck's ridiculous, and it's a pile. Uh, not a huge pile, a little bit different than how a lot of people play it, but it's not really reliant on junk speed. Well, of course, it's reliant on junk speeder, jet speed, whatever the heck that card is. But we don't summon it first. We play it a very different way. We try and bait our opponent with a bunch of powerful synchrons and uh, different cards first, and then we jet speeder. That way, we can actually win. The tournament was incredible. First round, I had no idea what I was doing. The second round, I'm like, wait a second, this deck might just be the craziest deck on the planet. Third round, same thing. Fourth round, same thing. Fifth round, I was Goku. To go even further beyond. Ah! And then we won the finals, obviously. So I'm gonna get straight into this. Before we do, check out the beautiful Magician Playmat on TripGaming.com. It's the only reason I want. And the beautiful Beyond the Pendulum deck box. You can't get these. You gotta top eight of YCS Brazil at that. And you'll only be able to do that if you play de the decks I play. So let's get straight into it. The Synchron numbers we did was these. Assault Synchron is the worst one, but it's still amazing. Like they're all great to see. But the only time the deck loses, and it's the same reason why I absolutely do not play Synchro Overload, whatever that the Synchro Nerd card. The reason why the deck is so powerful is when you draw cards that are kind of a middle of each, you can decide what you want to do in conjunction with half non half synchrons, half non synchrons, and play cards to the, uh, stop the opponent. That's why I also play three Small World, which I'm gonna get into in a little bit. But you need cards that kind of get anything. These two are so insane. Like I, I always thought these were horrible to draw. They're not. They're really not. Even this is not bad to draw, despite you can get it for free. Because this is the option now. You could make it basically a synchron or a non-synchron, depending on what your hand is. And you always have access to synchron. So despite the fact of you only playing seven, ten tunings, you play this and Foolish, which could send Stardust Synchron, which is the real MVP of the deck. It's not Revolution Synchron, despite being absolutely broken in an extender. It's not Jet Synchron, despite being amazing. It's not Assault Synchron, despite being an extender. It's this card. This is the deck. Without this, it's not a deck. You don't even need Jet Speed. If I've comboed without Jet Speed multiple times, it's with this this bad boy. I Jet Speed anyways when I have multiple negates after, but this gets you everything. This is it. Um, well, I would love to play more, but again, you don't want to open so many, and you already have seven ways to this. Ten ways to this, because it's a small world. So this is why I love Foolish, this, and three small worlds. It's basically five of anything you want. I even toyed around with playing Prosperity in the deck, but then I looked at Hyper Librarian, and I was like, never mind. So, no to that. Uh, so yeah, those, that's our tuner count. I'm not playing anything else, and this even felt too much sometimes. I've toyed with the idea of cutting Revolution to one, cutting Jet to one, and then I had a brain, and I realized I can't do that. If anything, you could actually cut Revolution to one. I'm not even kidding, but it's just so powerful. Why would you do that? You could get so many you want. The only There are put hands in this deck that you do draw four Synchro Monsters and a Veiler. What are you going to do? Especially now imagine when you draw two Synchrons, a Droll, an Imperm, and like an Enchantress. Oh, your hand's broken. Enchantress is Ash. Oh, I pass. So you want to make sure that you can actually play through a bunch of stuff, which is why I play a bunch of other cards in the deck as well to ensure of that. Cards like this. Cards like Souls and Illusion, which again, you play Small World. So you don't play Souls and Illusion. You play five Souls and Illusion. And Souls are an Illusion is remarkable. I go to that card every game. I don't know why people don't play it. Something else I play as well, on top of all that, is three Tengu. I'm really, literally, really, it's full combo and more. It's more than full combo. Like, and a free monster. And what are they gonna do when a Tengu is on field? Imagine you're going second. People have issues with this like going second. There was a replay, which I'm gonna show later. It was so beautiful, it brought a tear to my eye and a sadness to my opponents. But I was facing, uh, my opponent had Droll. I had Souls and four Bricks. It was unplayable. Uh, one of the bricks was this spell that I was mentioning that I viewed originally as a brick until this duel. I souls for one because I didn't want to get hit with the Veiler. And I, he, he drolled me at the end. I'm like, what am I going to do? And then I read this card. And I somehow, some way, read this card, which of course I drew both and Draco back because I'm nice. But somehow found a way to make Excel Synchro on. Oh, whoa, wait. I could summon start a synchro. I could tribute this. I could summon both. Wait a second. If this makes synchro, I could summon a level one. I could wait. How the I could boost the effect of Excel synchro. Souls. Yo, I have a Baron. Next thing I know, next thing I know, I have a Jet Speeder and a Baron. I'm like, how the, how the heck did I do this? All oh, my cards sucked in my hand. And it's because of cards like Souls. Because of cards like Fenrir, which I'm playing as well, which I'll get to a little later. You need to play cards like that. Cards that are not engine that people do not expect. Oh, a lot of people only play Enchantress as the non-tuner. Why? You have like nine or ten good ways, like enchanted with nine cards, right? So you're gonna rely on drawing a nine of? I have 16 of. Who do you think is gonna win more? How many times are you is gonna get ashed? All right, so you have five now. You need to be prepared for all these things, which is why all these non tuners, cards like Small World, cards like Tengu, cards like Souls and Illusion, are absolutely required. I would even love to play four souls, like two soul, two illusion. But the deck is very tight, and you do wanna play as many defensive cards as humanly possible. And there are some places as well where you can combo with hand traps. With Souls and Illusion as well. Same with uh, Fenrir. And it just baits the interruptions. So even when you draw multiple hand traps, you use them offensively. And that's the idea of the deck. 
You want to save Jet Speeder for very for the very end. You know that you need a level four and a level one, or an assault synchro and a level three, whatever. You, some way, somehow, you need to get to that. So bait your opponent's cards with your five cards. Same idea with Scareclaw. I would bait my opponent's all my interruptions. Save the normal Scareclaw. Next thing you know, he access code vicious astral loud. See you later, my friend. Your board's gone and you're dead. So make sure to play the same way. My package here is right here. These eight are all great to draw. Foolish is not just an enchantress. Foolish is also any synchron you want. And if you do not have access to this, which is the MVP of the deck, you need to get to it. This somehow, some way gets to your whole combo. It is by far the MVP of the deck after Jet Speeder. But it's because of that card. Griffin is also not even that bad to draw. Our Draco back is disgustingly ass, but Griffin is a level seven. And it's a non-tuner. Non-tuners are vital in this deck. With cards like Assault Synchron, uh, Excel, Stardust, the idea of the deck is you must summon Synchros, and I'll get to the extra deck a little later, to stop your opponent's interruptions. I can't stress it enough. A lot of people just go, oh, let me go Baron and Jet Speeder, and that's it. So if this gets stopped, I'm passing my turn. That's such a bad way to play the deck. Because your opponent will have two interruptions. What happens when you're going second? Is Baron going to magically summon itself without getting interrupted? No. So you save that Baron Jet Speeder play. And when I say Jet Speeder, I don't mean Jet Speeder by itself. You save Excel Stardust Jet Speeder. You save Baron Jet Speeder. You save that until later. Like, you know what I'm saying, guys? Do that later. Uh, yeah, make sure you bait the points cards first. Otherwise, you're going to get slapped. As I did round one. I figured out literally mid-tournament. Because I'm the best player in the game. That's it for the deck. It's 30. Draco back. That's 30 engine cards. Now, you can play 28 engine cards, I guess. And play less defensive cards. I'm playing a 45 card deck. But again, Fenrir. This is a defensive card. But guess what? It's a level 7 extender. They must deal with this. They do not deal with this. Not only do I get a free Fenrir. Not only will I get rid of one of the opponent's cards by entry battle phase. But now, my Synchron plays are live. Special Assault Synchron. I get Carcassor. Why did I not play that card? I don't know. Because you don't listen to Steven Trifonoski. That's why. So, Normal Revolution Synchron. Get Baron. Special level 1. Right. Enchantress. You need these stuff. Otherwise, you can't play. Now. For the defensive cards, the two Fenrir, that's the only non hand trap defensive card that is not in engine, but it's kind of engine. So you're playing 32 of these, but it's kind of defensive as well. And then the 13 hand traps I play, three, six, nine, 12, and I play Droll. Uh, it's a, also a bridge uh, to ensure for Reborn Tengu. And uh, yeah, it's a bridge for Small World, but it's also a great card. Like I would play three Small World, or sorry, three Droll as well. Uh, I just don't want to play 47 cards, and I do think these are the best hand traps. By the way, Nibiru is by far number one. I'll tell you why. You're not playing five hand traps. You're not playing six hand traps. You're not playing nine hand traps. Mathematically, you're playing 13. Mathematically, you will open two hand traps. Or at the very least, you're playing two Fenrir, hand trap and a Fenrir, whatever. So the idea is you have Nibiru and you have any of these. Your opponent is cooked. Doesn't matter. Like, it's Nibiru by itself. I gotta understand. It'll be stopped by a lot of decks. But Nibiru plus any other hand trap is just an FTK. I, like, I don't know how to say that more clearly. If you're playing 12 plus hand traps, Nibiru must be one of those 12 even in a format where Nibiru is bad because of a negate or something. Because, like, I get Sprite. I'm no doubt about it, this thing in my deck. Because when they attempt to stop it, I Valor, Imperm, Ash, whatever. And I side into four more hand traps, and I side into, like, if I really want to, I can have 25 defensive cards out of 45 cards. So going second, which is an issue with the deck, uh, you make sure that post side deck, your ratios are still the same. I know, main uh, in game one, I have 16 of the very powerful non-tuners, non-synchrons, and I have 15 of the very powerful synchrons if I really wanted to, with multiple of them being different, like ones of themselves. So I make sure the ratio is somewhat equal still, with a little less synchrons, because I also have tuner hand traps, which will not get to Jet Speeder. But again, I told you guys before, the deck it is Jet Speeder is remarkable, but you should be able to play without Jet Speeder. 45 cards in the deck. The only card, the only thing I would think about switching, if I was to keep this deck at 40 ish, like 45 max, 40 ish, probably 45 max, I would not change a single card. What I would change is to make this a 60 card deck because it opens up so many more lines of plays. I would insert three Lubellion and two Magnema, and I would research as many possible defensive cards, but also offensive at the same time. Because a Bestial, in any format, the Bestials are good, they're gonna be absolutely remarkable in this deck. You're essentially playing Bestial Adventure Synchro, but with actual good card cards with the Synchrons. Don't need the Link Summon. You just do all the stuff, but even better. But the Bestials right now are just not our whatever. Maybe in a future format, they could be insane. So if that format comes, maybe it's this, who knows? I would literally flood my deck with Bestials, and the deck would just be even more powerful. Uh, but I'm sure there's some other cards out there. I'll do more research and figure out. I do not play Synchro World, by the way, because the second Death Speeder resolves, the duel is over. Anything else after that is just a brick, which is the same reason I also do not run the lock. The end board of this deck 
is loop three from hand, draw six plus, depending on the hand, and whatever negates I have on board. The spider, bearing, croc, whatever. And hand to hand traps. I'm gonna show you guys the extra deck. I'm gonna, there's 12 cards that are, there's 13 cards that are mandatory. The other two you could kind of play around with, but I'll tell you what the best ones. Uh, these are the three best Synchro 5s. You're going to notice I do not play Synchro Overlord, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, not Why? Because you do not need normal summons in the deck. Most of the normal summons are extenders. All, all the non-tuners are extenders, except for Tengu. And all the Synchros are extenders as well, except Jet. And you can get Jet to the grave at any time you want. Like, they're all extenders. So, I don't want to play for the sake of Synchro Summoning, and I need more names of Synchrons. So, you don't need it. Uh, it's good, but you don't want too many Synchrons. And it takes up a slot in the extra deck. All three of these, you go into them a lot. Stardust Charge is vital, vital. Because it's a Stardust, I go into this every single game. Shooting Riser, no one plays this. You literally need to play it. Being able to play around with your level is vital. Not just for Tango plays, but you can make whatever in God's Green Earth you want simply by sending a level. And getting the follow-up is a bonus. I don't let it stay on the field, but just the fact that you can play around and get any level you want, you ensure, regardless of the weird-ass situation you're left with, because you can't think like, oh, I will definitely, without question, I will never open these two. Never. They're always going to stay in my deck. That's just not true. So in the scenarios where you do, your end board ends up being kind of weirder. There's no like set combo. Or sometimes you hard draw the one of Assault Synchron. So you can't summon uh, four. You can summon three. That's fine. Sometimes you go through two. You randomly draw two Stardust Synchron. All right, whatever. Sometimes it's a small world one of them. So the combo is not linear. It's, it's different all the time. So because of that, Shooting Riser ensures that it's basically linear. If you know what you're doing, you still get to the end board. Also, I would not advise this deck if you suck at Yu-Gi-Oh. Absolutely not. My first round, this is after cooking everyone on Dueling Book. Uh, I got I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I knew, but I was stuck in some weird scenarios. You know, I hoped in all my bricks. Uh, Mid-combo, I didn't have enough tuners. I'm thinking, why am I not playing Wheel Synchron? In that scenario, I was cooked. And then I sat there and thought... Does Yugi Moto think he gets cooked? No. And I'm better duelist than him. So I decided after that I'm just going to win all the rest of my matches. And I did. Obviously. Now we're six boxes richer. Uh, next, we play these. You're going to notice it's kind of a Stardust deck. This is literally vital. This, ha this Playing these four, and these are all key. It ensures now when you hard draw these two. Now if you look through the deck, look. All these are great, except for Draco back. They're all great to draw. They're all amazing to draw. And I, as I said before, I really thought, like, just to be able to get this and tuning, you don't even need to resolve Jet. Uh, if you have access to these uh, these five, you do not need Jet Speeder. I don't even know what the card is. Junk Speeder, whatever. You don't need it. Well, it's nice, for sure. If you have access to this, you don't need it. This gets the full lo loop to whatever. This gets to your full combo without this. So it's vital to have this. Vital. So just remember that. And it's only possible because you have these. So next, Omega is important. This is also very important for single climbing. The idea, you do want to draw six. Sometimes, there was times where I left with like, oh, I, I opened very weird. I'd end on a board of like, Librarian, I forgot what it was. I think Librarian, Disc Batter, and like a random, like uh, something random, like a tuner or something. I had to discard at the end phase. My opponent had two cards left in his hand. I had to discard at the end phase. I had one to gate. Yeah, but I had five hand traps. So the idea, you shouldn't think about your only lock, calamities lock him. Dude, you, if they don't hand trap you, you're going to end on a full board. They're, they're screwed. If they do hand trap you, they're still screwed because you're going to get rid of the other cards in their hand. They're hand looping themselves unless they have triple hand trap. Two hand trap is not enough. You need three against this deck. So this is why the end board is focus on getting the draws, focus on librarian, focus on this, focus on uh, this, focus on the draws. It, it's truly vital. And Crimson is also double draw. And uh, Assault Synchro, Assault XL, whatever. These are the Synchro 10s, Baron and Dispatter. I do not play Chaos Angel. And you play uh, Crimson Dragon. I do not play another Synchro 12. It could come up at times, but it's just not relevant at all. Uh, these are the three that I played in the tournament. These are all vital. These 12 are absolutely mandatory. If you're not playing them already, just throw them in. I decided Shooting Riser over Black Rose. You could play Black Rose if you want, but I think Shooting Riser does open up a lot of cool plays for me. So I opted for Shooting Riser uh, because it's a dragon, which is, a, well, they're both dragons. But to be able to play around with the level it is important. And if typically if you get that far, uh, you could uh, do a lot of stuff. Uh, so I ended up playing Harold, Black Rose, and Trish. Uh, Trish is cool. He, this is how you hand loop three. You essentially go Crimson Dragon onto the croc or Excel Synchron on level nine to bring out Trish to hand loop three. But 
It's cool and all, but I do not want to rely on Crimson Dragon to do that. Crimson Dragon typically does other things to make sure my play is like smooth. I don't want to force my Crimson Dragon to be forced to do that. To be forced to go into random synchronization in order to, to resolve that. Crimson Dragon is better when it's used kind of offensively and not to focus on getting that. So instead what I would advise is to play a, a one scrap dragon guaranteed. You need a, a second dragon synchro 8. It could be Crystal Wing if you'd like. That's also another one. The deck has enough negates. You could play Crystal Wing. But Scrap Dragon for going second, it, it is relevant to have a generic card that says pop. Yeah, play one Scrap Dragon and one Gotham's. That leaves now the 15th card. It could probably be a Black Rose. But uh, real, you are never... At the end of the games, you always see one of these in your extra deck. So that just tells you... All, sometimes two of them. Sometimes both stay in the extra deck. Most times, actually. You simply just pick one. And the idea of using Black Rose is you go Tango and Revolution Synchron. All right. And then you use Black Rose Effect. All right. Pass. What the fuck's the point of that? You just passed yourself. Then you die. That's... There's no... Like, unless your game plan is Black Rose and do nothing, that's not a game plan I'm happy with. I'll just lose the next turn. So, the, in theory, Black Rose is great. What are you going to do? Black Rose your faithful adventure? No. Like, it, in theory, it's great. It's not. And you don't have that many monsters to play with. It's not like Scarecrow where you can summon 20 times. When that monster's gone, you lose. So you can't let this destroy itself. There's a new Synchro that uh, generically pops one, I believe. That could be decent, but Shooting Riser affecting level is pretty important. So that 15th card, you can play whatever you want. Don't play Calamities, though. It's literally a waste of a slot. Uh, if you want to, you can just throw in Calamities in a generic Synchro 12. But I don't think there'll be any scenario where you're like, you know what, I lost this duel because my opponent had two cards in hand. I had six. Actually, I actually had eight. I had to discard two. I have five hand traps and three negates. My opponent has two cards in hand. I actually have five more interruptions and my opponent has cards in hand. Let me just Calamity lock him. I don't think there'll be a single duel in the world where you wish you had it. So for that purpose of not being a clown, don't play it. Now the side deck. Uh, there's 17 hand traps uh, within the 13. Uh, I still wanted cards that aren't just hand traps. There's a lot of decks that do, don't care about hand traps. Hand traps are just there for cards like the decks like the Mirror, decks that put up infinite interruptions. Uh, very if, most likely if there was no like if my deck if this deck wasn't in the format or just the generic decks that put, like revolution synchron decks that put up like 16 gates i'd probably just go for board breakers instead we also have to worry about cards like anti-spell which this deck doesn't really care about well it does but not really not really uh draw like it hurts a bit but not really uh so it's nice i also play two thrust two talents uh just generic cards as well to ensure that the every game going second you have 45 cards in deck i ensure no matter what that there's 20 good cards going second at least. That's typically the number. I don't, normally don't clear 20. 20 is a good number out of 45. You're going to draw like three of them. Your point is cooked. Uh, so it's good to have them. I don't like mixing the uh, hand traps and board breakers too much. But talents and thrusts are a little bit more than a board breaker. Uh, I don't use them as board breakers. I use them almost offensively going second. And it's also nice that thrust could set a D barrier. D barrier is a turn skip against a lot of decks. Mine included. Both my decks actually. Pendulum and this. Uh, but not Scared Claw, which is good. Uh, I also play uh, Talents, uh, sorry, Call By and Cross Out. Uh, if I, my, if my opponent plays a deck that plays hand traps, or if I see a hand trap, or if I joke around, Droll and Lockbird, I'm not gonna let you do it. I'm not gonna let you use Droll. I'm gonna cross out your ass. Sometimes I even let them Droll me. That's Cap, I never let them. Uh, every single time I see Droll, it's just getting hit with the fucking Cross Out designator, the quickest uh, ever. Uh, but now look at this. Let's say you're going first now. Who the fuck's doing anything? Like, you're playing a deck that you need two hand traps to stop me, minimum. All right, cool. I open one of these eight. Now you need four hand traps to stop me. You lose. And you, I'm going to have Omega in my, on my field that I will not even be able to activate because you will no longer have a hand. So I'll have to save it in hoping that you just pass priority in main phase. So this is why these are so powerful. And the beauty of it is that these are not for going first. They're for going second. But they are nice to have. And this sounds crazy, but there's a few decks out there that are super ass in the meta. A lot, there's not a few, there's a lot. So I actually side D Barrier and Cross Out Decimator. Only in decks that play a lot of hand traps as well, because this is not the only reason I'm gonna do it. Going second. The main purpose of Cross Out Decimator will be for hand traps, yes. But I know for a damn fact that if they don't have D Barrier, they lose the game. So I have that set up. And a lot of people are playing D-Barrier right now because it stops the top four decks. And by stop, I mean they turn skip. 
So it's nice to have, and I got this idea from my teammate Assad. Also, I play a one uh, Kurikara. This is for, because I play six of them. Uh, sorry, I, I play six of them. One of this, two Thrust, and three Small World. Small World gets to this, Thrust gets to Small World. I get the Kurikara anytime I would like. And the only way to resolve Kurikara is if they use a monster effect. So it, it's kind of the same thing. So I'm actually playing three. There's no reason to play multiples in scenarios we don't need to, especially when you're playing Infinity Hand Traps. But to have Infinity Hand Traps plus just the generically one curry card, which you get to by six cards, is actually quite powerful. You get to it whenever you want. And uh, yeah, then the one D shifter as well, just for cross out. And uh, that's the deck. Uh, the deck's actually amazing. Literally, if you're gonna, if you want to keep it near 40, if you don't want to be crazy and play like 60 or some shit, keep it card for card how it is. It's worked like a blast. If anything, cut Revolution Singer onto one. If the idea of cutting Revolution Seeker onto one sounds ridiculous to you, that's how ridiculous it is to cut Souls or Illusion. Souls or Illusion is better than Revolution Seeker without question, not even a single doubt in my mind. That's it. That's about it, guys. So, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. First place. Uh, we're going to win many more. If you guys got this far, check out the people play map. Check out the deck box on Thank you, guys. See you guys next video. Peace.